Hello, this is Jacob Barrett. Today I'm going to talk to you about two related concepts important to public choice theory, rational ignorance and rational irrationality. Both seek to explain why people make choices that are uninformed, irrational, or even against their own interests. The theory of rational ignorance explains why people choose to be ill-informed or ignorant about issues. Anthony Downs introduced this theory in 1957 to explain why being poorly informed about political issues for voters in a democracy is a rational decision, rather than the result of laziness or apathy. This is because a single vote is very unlikely to change the results of an election, because each vote only has a negligible impact on the outcome time spent researching candidates is not worth the benefit of casting a well-informed vote. If a person's vote is effectively irrelevant, then a rational person should choose to spend only a minimal amount of time deciding how to cast it. Thus, in a large election, the normal voter will be rationally ignorant. Examples of this abound in politics. The rational ignorance explains any situation where the cost of gathering information exceeds the benefits of knowing it. An example of this can be seen in the discourse around capitalism in radical circles, namely that it is the sole cause of income inequality and a slew of other problems. While the answer is much more nuanced, spending the time to develop a refined knowledge base is costly and the benefits of expending such energy are low. Therefore, there is little personal cost to holding sophomoric beliefs, and a social benefit to blaming capitalism among those who agree with you. For radicals, it may be rational to be ignorant. But, to be fair, the exact same is true of those who see capitalism as panacea to all economic woes. Rational irrationality accepts the tenets of rational ignorance and builds off them to explain why people who are rationally ignorant nevertheless hold beliefs with such certainty. Brian Kaplan, who first coined the term in 2001, proposed that when private error costs are zero, conclusions that are at the same time baseless and unreasonable sh should be expected. This is because if there is little negative incentive against holding irrational beliefs, such as creationism or the belief in aliens, then there will be little reason to doubt them. If, however, it becomes costly to hold these beliefs, people will do so with less certainty. An example used by Kaplan is the belief that Earth, the Earth is only 6,000 years old. For most people, holding this belief would entail only minimal costs, a raised eyebrow here and there perhaps. But for a geologist, the same belief would probably cost them both their reputation and their job. So when the private costs of the belief are nil, there is no incentive to doubt the certainty of one's belief. But as the costs rise, then people will have the incentive to believe less vehemently. An example of this is racism, or the irrational belief that race determined important personal traits. In the past, there was effectively no negative consequence for having racist beliefs. Indeed, there were even benefits from it. This lack of cost made it, ira made it rational to hold irrational sentiments. But as our society has changed, such views have increasingly negative costs, mostly social. I mean, who wants to be friends with neo-Nazi? But as Donald Sterling, who has recently fined two and a half million dollars for racist mal remarks, will tell you, the cost can be economic as well. Thus, as the costs of racist belief rise, people will hold them with less certainty, and some will abandon them altogether. The theories of rational ignorance and rational irrationality both explain how behaviors that seemingly stem from being uninformed or illogical can be explained as agents acting rationally to further their own self-interest. The scarcity of time and information forces people to make trade-offs. When, when the personal cost of being uninformed or irrational about a topic is low, people will invest their mental energies elsewhere, not because they are stupid, but because doing so is the best use of their limited time and energy. So sometimes it's smart to be dumb, and it makes sense not to make sense.